Hi, this is Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve, and today we're going to take a look at the Qualifier tool. And what the Qualifier tool does is allow us to select ranges of colors, saturations, or luminance, so that we can isolate that section of an image and manipulate the colors, the temperatures, the saturations, and such of that section. It's basically using hue, saturation, and luminance to create a mask that then we can do uh, make adjustments to. So here I've got this little trailer, our tractor thing here, and you know it, it looks old. I want to make it look a little more rustier and so I'm going to want to bump the oranges and maybe some browns a little bit, but if I just go in here and start tweaking things yeah, it's affecting the entire image. That's not what I want. I only want it to affect the colors of the tractor itself. So these real yellow pieces right here. So I'm going to be in my color tab and I'm going to start a new node. So that's option S or alt S. And now we have a new node to work with. If I was going to use the qualifier without adding a new node, then some weird things can happen globally that I don't want. So I'm gonna have a new node just so I can make my selections. So I have my eyedropper tool here, and on the selection range, even though you would think you could start with the eyedrop plus, you have to go with the eyedrop target, and I can click in there and select a little range. Now you can barely, barely see it over on this mask section. So I'm going to grab the eyedrop plus and I'm going to go around and select some ranges of the yellow that we're going to work with just to make sure I have a good sampling of the different colors. And you can see it's actually grown that section there. Let me get some of this just to be on the safe side. All right, now we can double check to see where we're at by going to the highlight tool. And it looks like it's done a pretty decent job of grabbing the yellows that are there. <clears throat> now it did grab this fire hydrant in the back. We could mask that out later if we wanted to. I'm not going to worry about it right now. We're going to focus on this tractor. So on the hue, I know I probably want to ease in and out and grab a little broader range of that yellow. So I'm going to adjust the width of the hue. As you can see, if I go the other way, the width is very narrow, so only a very few select colors will appear. As I open up that width, it's going to allow more of that yellow range. Now it's going to get into the reds and the greens, and you could keep opening up as much as you want. So it just kind of depends on how far you want the effect to go. Now see where these red blotches are? I don't want to lose that, so I just want to ease into it. So I'm going to adjust down to where they just start to show there. Same with the saturation. It looks pretty saturated. I'm not going to deal with uh, trying to mess with that too much. But we'll go over to the matte finesse and see if we can finesse this matte a little bit more. So the first two are going to be your clipping, your white clips and your black clips. If you don't know what to do, just play around with them. It doesn't hurt anything. You know, you can... You can't go to the left anymore, zero is the lowest number, slide it to the right, take it to 100. Like, nope, didn't, didn't really do anything. All right, reset that one. Let's try the white clip. Very, very, very little change happened in there. Not going to bother with it. Let's try the clean black. Oh, there we go. We got some stuff moving around on there. So it's going to affect kind of how it's easing into those colors. So it may not be quite as sharp um, and bleedy. So I don't want to get too crazy with it, but I'm going to take it to about 20 there. So as you can see, just playing with the tools allows you to see what they do. And that's the best way to learn DaVinci Resolve is just to play around with it. Let's see what the clean white does. And it's similar. It's going to open up those colors of hair. So I'm going to leave it... Uh, a place that looks good. Blur radius, that's the, the blurring around the object that it's trying to do to, to blend into it a little more. So we can see how that affects things by moving in and out. So I'm going to kick that up a little bit. 
and then we have the in out ratio and again don't know what it does do you oh just try it so it's kind of like the level of sharpening in the selection range so we're going to try a hey, it looks like around there and i'm going to turn that off so now any of my color correction tools i can apply to this mask pretty cool huh so let's just try making it look a little more rusty so i'm going to go into the yellows and oranges a little bit more right probably right across the line but now I've added a lot of color, so I want to desaturate those. I'll pull those down a little bit. Maybe right in there. Now let's just turn off that layer. So very yellow, and I went to a nice softer orange. Just kind of gave it a, a little touch. Now you could certainly really whack these over and push them as far as you want. Let's see how big of a difference that made. So change it completely from yellow into the orange. Now, if we want to just make this very John Deere, or I don't know, I don't know, Caterpillar, I guess would be very yellow. I'll pull those into the yellow band and I'll kick the saturation up. And we'll go over to our other page and kick the boost up a little bit. Add even more yellow to it and wham wham oh way over the top so as you can see you can do a lot with this and it's going to affect the whole scene not just one frame so you can get as crazy as you want you can anything that i can adjust in here my blur my sharpening my noise reduction coloring all these things can be affected uh, with the mask. Now, show you one more thing that I think is super cool about what we've done here with these nodes. So you can see I have this node here, I can turn it on and off, and I, it's a selection of the tractor. Now, I can right click on that, say add a node, add outside. Now what it's done is it's selected everything except that mask. So everything outside that mask is now in play. And we can color boost it. And you'll see everything that I do here is not being affected by the or is not affecting what I've done to the tractor. So it's a way of selecting what I want to change. And by using an outside node, I can then change everything else. So gives me that great way of dealing with things using the qualifier tool. Now we'll go one more. I'm going to create a new node here. And sometimes the sky can be a little tricky and the HSL may not be the right one to use. You can also choose RGB. You can choose the luminance and another one called 3D. Now when I select the 3D qualifier, all I'm going to do is just draw in the sky. Do to do, and it's going to select everything in the sky there. And you can see that it did that looking at this node. So now we'll go over and let's let's make that sky more blue. But notice how it is affecting the shadows down here. It is turning them blue. So got to be careful what we we wish for sometimes. Let's make a, oh, let's go to more of a blue sky here. And we'll just adjust our masks a little bit. Let's take a look at that sky. So we've gone from a teal to uh, more of a blue tint. And we'll just make it more green just to make the point here. But now we see we've got all this purplish bluish down in here. Well, that's not, that doesn't look right. No matter how we've kind of modified what we've done in the sky, we didn't want it to affect the ground. 
and using the outside node isn't going to help because it's already picking this up. So we'll just go over and do a power window. I'm just going to create a square and I'm just going to do a quick masking off of this so we can see what it's going to do. All right, so now I've drawn a box called a power window along the bottom of the frame here. And if I invert this mask, watch those shadows. They've just gone back to normal because now I've said, don't touch anything inside this box. Only deal with what's outside of it, which is going to be the sky area. So that's using some power windows and the qualifier. In another video, we're going to go much deeper into power windows and how to track power windows and do some really cool stuff. So for right now, take it easy. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. Be sure and click that like button. And if you like what you see, definitely, definitely smash down on that subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure that you get notified whenever there's a new video that comes out. Take care, everyone. We'll catch you later. Happy editing. See you next time. Bye-bye.